Well, what's going on, everybody? Welcome into the pod at the palace, or the pod at the callus, if you will. Curtis Wilkerson, Scotty Borderline with Natty State Sports here with you today. Um, hello, everyone. Somebody. John Calipari is uh, finalizing a deal to be Arkansas's new basketball coach. And um, we got to avoid the coming on here and going completely nuclear on Hunter Juracek for botching a coaching search. So that feels good. <laughs> Scotty, Absolutely. what's up? Absolutely. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> left here a little bit after one this morning. Got in here a little bit before eight and got right to it. Yeah. And dude. I'm excited to kind of lay out to everybody what we've been cooking up the last few hours in terms of, you know, potential, you know, roster construction and, and whatnot. Um, you can see some of the names behind Curtis. We're going to dive into that. Uh, but it's just, it's, it's still like, I know you tweeted, you pinched yourself this morning. It still hurt. <laughs> and so, but it's still, I think I'm still anxious. Like I'm, I'm, I'm anxious for this thing to, I'm anxious for Hunter Juracek to hit the white smoke tweet. Yes. I'm ready for that. Cause I, yes. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm a little uneasy. Yeah. Until this thing is officially official. Yeah. I feel you on that one, especially after, uh, you know, everybody's ran with it the way that they have. I mean, it's it's everywhere. And you've already got, you know, every outlet, uh, you know, posting about, you know, like what, who of Cal signing class is going to stay at Kentucky? Who's going to come to Arkansas? Who's going to do whatever? Like it's, I mean, it is all over the place. So, um, you know, it, it you need ink on paper and you need to get it dry or whatever, but we, we all know where this is headed. And uh, it does just feel surreal and I think the reason I feel a little bit uneasy is because like this doesn't happen to Arkansas no um this has completely rocked the college basketball landscape to the point where this is a bigger story than a national championship game between the clear two best teams in the country with a storyline of you got one team that is on the verge of going back to back and you got another who's trying to pull a Virginia of lost to a 16 seed and trying to win a title the next year. I mean, it's a it's it's about as good of a national title game as you could ask for. And they're going to be talking about Cal and Arkansas the entire time. It's it's unbelievable yeah. to be in this position. <laughs> There's no doubt. I was thinking you're talking about Purdue for a second. I'm, like if, if Purdue wins tonight, um, I think the blueprint is there now for if you're a serious basketball program, you lose to a 16. And then you come back the next year, and then you just you win it all, right? Like that's yeah. the that's the blueprint, the recipe to to, to win a national title. Um, yeah, I, I I can't wait for the game tonight, but I also can't wait to watch just to see how much Arkansas talk there is and Calipari I talk know. there is. I mean, I'm going to repeat something Matt Norlander said last night, because he went live on YouTube while I was driving home really late. And he was like, this was a legendary night yes. in terms of the coaching <laughs> carousel. And that news literally flipped the Final Four on its head, dude. Like, everybody's looking forward to, you know, about midday yesterday, everybody's looking forward to oh, Donovan Klingon and Zach Eady and, you know, what are the the keys to the game? And, you know, yeah. it's just like, Arkansas was like, no, nah, fam, we're – you know, we're getting John Calipari in here, John Calipari in here, <laughs> where somebody gets on, dunks on my head. Yeah, man. For that, but it's uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to tonight for multiple reasons. For sure, yeah, it's um, it, it, it's fascinating how we got here. First of all, we're live people, so if you if you got questions or comments, make sure you get in the chat. Uh, we are going to take some time at the end of this to to get to as much of it as we can. It was bonkers last night so if you were in there last night and you were commenting i mean we we were all i think we streamed for like three and a half hours um in real time and stuff was just rolling through we didn't get to it all sorry um but we'll, we'll do our best to get to as much as we can today um but it, it's just unreal scotty how we got here i mean if you really think about it this was and, and it wasn't just us i mean th we're talking about the people who break this stuff nationally and cover coaching searches on a national scale for most of the weekend, the vibe was very much, we don't know what the hell's going on right. at Arkansas. Right. Um, yeah, the Chris Beard thing didn't work out. No, oh, the Jerome Tang thing didn't work out. And it was, oh, maybe Chris Jans? Oh, is, is, is Buzz Williams in the mix? 
what's up with this Daryl Walker thing? Is, is Greg Sankey going to let him hire Will Wade? And that's where it all was. And then in the background the entire time, there was this, well, you know, Cal, he's, uh, he's buddies with the Tyson fam and... You know, things are rough at Kentucky, and you know, there's probably some mutual interest there. Cool story, bro. Yeah. We added him to the hot board Saturday night because there's enough there to to warrant doing it. But I, I'd have to go back and look at exactly what I wrote. But I, I very much made it clear in there, like, I just don't see this as a feasible thing because yeah. of the money. Right. The dude is making $8.5 million a year. And like I said on the stream, this is more money, his annual salary, than Eric Musselman his entire coaching staff, and Arkansas's entire NIL budget last year combined. I just didn't think it was feasible, but here we are. Yeah, it's wild. Like, I thought the most – one of the more concrete things that we got over the weekend was Chris Beard is in New Orleans on Bourbon Street. Yeah. <laughs> and any kind of, like, re-engagement discussions were obviously going through his agent and not not him directly. Um yeah, you're you're right, dude. I um, I, there's a comment in here that's got me wondering what's going on. There's a question for me, and it's WTF. I don't understand what that. <laughs> I don't understand what that's about. If you could elaborate, <laughs> go ahead. I love it. What a hot start. Yeah, we're we're rolling over here. Um, and another thing that I'll say about this is, it it creates like this trickle down effect. We talk about dominoes. Like, first of all, how did we get here? And it all started because of SMU yeah. basketball, uh, with them firing their guy after two years and, and having a 20 win season because they wanted to, you know, up the ante a little bit before they go to the ACC, uh, that gets infield out of USC. It gets must out of Arkansas to USC. Some people think that that was something that must concocted all along. If he's that much of a, of a, master planner like that he's a bad man yeah, if it all went down that way but that just is, for the that's some mob stuff there. man for the dominoes to fall the way they did and then for shout out to the tysons and, and the boosters the donors everyone that's involved in getting this thing done for you know probably getting tired of hearing the yeah, well, Arkansas's NIL situation is tough, and oh, they don't have the resources you think they do, uh, and and just saying, you know what, screw that, watch this, uh, and now they're going all in, and Arkansas is going to be the bad boys of college basketball. I mean, the yeah. villains, yeah. The, the people that everybody's rooting for to uh, to not find success, and I'm I'm here for it, man. It felt that way a little bit at times when Eric was here. You know, there was the. You know, and, and even going back, I guess that that's kind of – I don't want to say that's been who Eric has been his his whole coaching career, but, I mean, you remember the um, in-the-hallway stuff after Nevada lost a close game at Utah mm, State, and yeah. there's, you know, hallway footage of stuff breaking out there, and then there's Maui, and, you know, there's probably other instances that I, I can't think of off the top of my head, but it was for, like, actions, and this is, like, bad boys in terms of like we've got the money and we're going to go buy a team and as Cal likes to say we're going to come into your arena and we're going to we're going to beat you <laughs> and then we're going to we're going to go home <laughs> and you're going to go home sad yes like one of those kinds of things I'm um I'm looking forward to looking forward to that and I just like Curtis I still just can't I'm trying to wrap my mind around or start thinking about what covering Cal is going to be like I'll say this. I went to uh, Kentucky when Arkansas and Kentucky played in 2015. I think Kentucky was number one in the country. Arkansas was top 20. Um, it was an event. It really was. And that was the team that was at the time undefeated and didn't lose until, you know, deep in the NCAA tournament. But it was a it was an event, man. I remember from my seat looking down and right before tip off, Phil Jackson walks out of the tunnel <laughs> and just takes a seat. <laughs> on the baseline and he's just watching all of these future pros play. And um, remember going to, after we talked to Mike Anderson, went to John Calipari's press conference, John Calipari's press conference, hundreds of people there. And I'm not exaggerating. It's, it's an event. You call it circus like if you want to. Um, I'm interested to see if that's, I would imagine it'll still be the case here, maybe on a, a slightly smaller scale, but 
um, I'm excited, anxious, eager, all of the above, man. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome to the spotlight. Welcome to the show. Yeah. That's, that's kind of where we're at now. Uh, coach Cal has always struck me as kind of a larger than life figure. And it's, it, it really is going to be interesting to cover. It's going to be great for business. I wonder what it means in terms of access and, and everything like that. We'll, we'll find out soon enough. I'm sure his intro press conference will be absolutely wild. Um, and we are doing this in real time. So appreciate the people in the chat. I've, I've seen several things come up here that uh, I guess, I don't know, on Twitter that the the holdovers at Kentucky or have been told there's a team meeting at Cal's crib or something at two o'clock. Um, so is that right? Yeah. So there you go. Um, don't get cold feet, bro. <laughs> but if that, if that's truly the case, I'm just taking people's word for it right now because I, I'm, I'm obviously doing this and not on Twitter. Um, if, if he's having a in-person sit down with those guys and having that conversation with them, I got a lot of respect for that uh, because a, a lot of coaches don't do that. They'll send a text. Maybe they'll make a phone call. Maybe they don't say anything at all. They just dip. Um, and, and so if he's doing that, yeah, I got I'm, a lot of respect for it. I am seeing a tweet here from a, a Kentucky, it's like a credentialed Kentucky writer. Uh, players have been informed there will be a meeting at, to it at Cal's house. So. Yeah, there you go. Um, man. It's just somebody said, are they just going to watch the eclipse together? <laughs> <laughs> that's all it is. Yeah, that's it. Just a, just a team bonding thing, I guess. Right. Oh, buddy, man, it's just incredible. And I think we can all agree, like this is just, this is huge in terms of spotlight for the program and branding and it, it, it kind of elevates things. I think it raises your floor, but I wonder what it does for your ceiling. And so when we think about like just reasonable expectations for Cal here in Fayetteville, um, I mean, he's a legendary coach. He's a Naismith Hall of Famer. He's top 10 all time in wins, division one college basketball history. Um, he's won a national title. He's been to six final fours, but the last few years, haven't really been that great for them. They had some great regular seasons, K but you Kentucky know, Kentucky hasn't been to the second weekend of the tournament since 2019. Right. Like we didn't know we didn't know about COVID 2019, and Kentucky hasn't been to a Sweet 16 or an Elite Eight since then, and they've been bounced by a 14 and a 15 seed two of the last three years. Mm -hmm. I understand the unrest that was, you know, that had been growing and growing and growing in that program, and. Um, yeah, I think like I got a friend that's a Kentucky fan, and he's just like, I hope it works out for Arkansas. You know, on our side over at Kentucky, I think it was I'm happy for him, but I think it was time for a change. Like, I think it's, I think people in Kentucky now looking back at it, probably they're, I mean, they're grateful for for what he did, but you know, maybe it just wish it would have ended on a a higher note. Obviously, yeah, yeah, no doubt about it, and I just. Here are my thoughts on on expectations at Arkansas. Um, I, I don't think you go into this hire saying Final Four or bust. Got to got to get a ring. Got to because it's just so hard to do. But have one of the most talented teams in the conference and country every year. Yep. Um, it's not just about the mystique of Kentucky. It's about the mystique of a man who has had 58 players drafted into the NBA and an NIL package now that, assuming that's not a bunch of hat, is uh, going to be among the best in the country. You should be able to go out and get absolute dudes. Um, not making the tournament, that's not acceptable. Right. I think you need to be competing at the top of the SEC and in the conversation. Arkansas every year. doesn't make the second weekend of the tournament next season, I'll be disappointed. I will too. And that's I crazy. Think that, I think that's where <clears> I'm at. Yeah, me too. And it's kind of crazy to think about that since he hasn't done it in a minute. <laughs> yeah. Um, did they get there last year or was that a second round loss to Kansas State? Second round. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it went St. Peter's first round loss. Right. And then second round loss. And then Jack Golke. Yeah. Whew. Uh, hopefully, 
hopefully Arkansas doesn't run into a dude like that <laughs> in, the, in the tournament next year. Um, but the building is going to be sold out. The fascination is going to be there. People are going to be excited. The team, uh, despite it being April 8th and you have two players technically on your roster at the moment they're going to be talented i mean they're they're going to be good uh people have questioned you know they still have it from an x's and o's standpoint i will say about that um i thought it actually evolved pretty well this year from an offensive standpoint i know people have been frustrated about that and called it basic or archaic or whatever in the past um i think he just got i think he had better pieces this year absolutely man they played fast uh, they knocked down threes. They moved well. I thought they had some really good actions. I thought from a from a scheme standpoint that they looked a lot better offensively than they had the past few years. When I did agree that it was just like, I don't know, yeah, some some high school <laughs> some high school whiteboard stuff there for sure. No, it, it's crazy, Curtis. In twenty twenty two twenty three, Kentucky. This is by Ken Palm metrics sixty five point eight possessions per game. Last season, 72.7. So the offensive efficiency was in the top 10, best three-point shooting team in the country. Also, what you like to see, best shot-blocking team in the country. Um, but again, it was defensively, it was one of those cases where because you're a good shot-blocking team doesn't equate to you being a good defensive team. Um, but yeah, the pieces were, were definitely there. Um, it helps when you've got like three guys that are 40% three-point shooters. I hope, it, our, it I hope helps, Arkansas yeah. next season just has, like, <laughs> one of those guys. Um, yeah, super fun team to watch. 12th in the country in tempo, 7th in offense. Like, he's – like, and that's that's what you wanted to see from a, a super talented team is, like, Reeves – Antonio Reeves can create for himself, but he's also a knockdown shooter. Find a guy like that. Reed Shepard, man, I just feel like he was such an anomaly last year. Just everything he threw up seemed to go in. And then Dillingham, like this, like you put those kind, those caliber players next to each other, you can't help but have, you know, a really good offensive team, lots of firepower. Defensive end is a, a different deal. Um, yeah, maybe you just need more guys bought into to that end of the floor. But right, I would not doubt whatsoever that one of Cal's top top. Uh, objectives is just go get more rim protection and just whatever can solidify the defensive end of the floor mm -hmm. so he probably feels really good about like the, even the, the commitments that are up there hoopers can really go score it um i feel like you just you always can use some more backup in the front court for sure uh, i think a lot of it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out in terms of his coaching staff um i know that was kind of part of the conversation about him you know coming back to kentucky uh, for another year or, or not getting fired or whatever. They couldn't fire him, man. It was too much money yeah. uh, to go through there. I wonder how many of those guys come with him. Um, I wonder if there are any former assistants that he had that, that he might run it back with. If he if he makes some new moves, does he keep Brew? I hope he keeps Ronnie Brewer. Yeah. Um, I just, I, I'm really interested to see what all that is going to look like. Um. This is fascinating, man. Like we've got we've got a bunch of people in the chat saying that there's a team meeting at Cal's house at two o'clock, and then we got a bunch of other people saying he's in the athletic office in Fayetteville. I guess you better get on that flight quick. It, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it, it's one or the other. I don't know. So we'll see. We shall see. Um, but in terms of roster building, the man's got a blank canvas, and he's got a, a boatload of nil. This is going to be wild to see what they do. Yeah. Um, so right now you've got eleven scholarship spots to fill. Yeah. yeah, I don't think I don't think the freshman. I don't think Isaiah Alien is sticking around. I just don't. Um, maybe I'll be wrong on that. We'll see. I never Which, heard back from Trevor in Brazil either. So yeah, <laughs> we yeah, <just> <laughs> don't know. Tre Trevor Brazil was going to declare for the draft. Um, whether that was like a testing the water situation, I I don't know. Um, I wouldn't. I mean, I don't think there's any reason for him to not go ahead and do that. Sure. Um, but I have to think that he's more open to the idea of sticking around. I mean, like the NIL would be there for him. First of all, second of all, um, 
if you're trying to, you know, kind of rebuild your, your draft stock and your profile there, who better to do that under than a, than a guy like Cal? Yeah, you um, put a couple guys in the league. So I think there's definitely some, some allure to that process. So I'm going to be interested to see how that plays out. I wonder about, before we get into the Kentucky standpoint of this, uh, just other guys for Arkansas who've entered the portal, who would be interested in coming back and who would they be interested in having? Um, I mean, I would imagine that T. Mark and Caleb Battle. I, I don't know how you would turn either one of those guys away. Yeah. Right. I mean, um, I actually think the the thought of a Caleb Battle, John Calipari, it feels marriage right, is man. it feels right. You got some Jersey in him, northeast just, connection. Yeah. 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 I think that could be a lot of fun. I think like so a too. lot of fun. Uh, T. Mark. I I don't know. Um, I mean. Obviously, I think it would. I think it would be great. I think Arkansas would would, would love to have him back, um, but I do wonder if you get both of them. Do you get one of them? You know, uh, and then there's the the in state guys, and this is where it gets a little bit murky to me. Uh, Devo Davis, Arkansas legend, whether you like it or not, postseason, right? Was in the program for four years, has a year left. Is this something he would want to reconsider? Layden Blocker, highly rated recruit, in-state kid, talented freshman, still got some work to do in his development. It's been so quiet since he got into the portal, and, and a lot of the thought behind that is kind of waiting it out to see how things shake out at Arkansas right. before making another move. Do those guys try to come back? Do they take them? Do they take both of them? And those are things that you have to wonder about. Yeah, I think in like, I would love to see Layden Blocker back because I think under under Cal he could, I think he could just like he could grow his like his personal brand. I don't even know if that's the right way to say it, but just his he could raise it rises raise his stock with with Cal. Um, I think the like a coaching change is I almost felt like that's what. Layden needed or wanted um so he's got that but like you mentioned do they want him back would they have him I just don't know with Devo either man yeah and it's it's almost like a fresh start clean house for the most part like if you if if you know T Mark and KB and whoever don't come back but I think my thought process fed up at the end of the year but maybe it's like a fresh start at home with what you're used to, but would you be welcomed back? Well, what's your understanding of your role too? Yeah. Because I have the feeling that they're going to get some dynamite guards. And so does, does Devo want to go somewhere where he can play 30 minutes and a game? He talked or to or me does... after the season was like, I just, who talked a lot about not playing the role that he wanted and not everybody cared what he was sacrificing for. So just, to me, it seems like a another school would probably be best for him, mm-hmm. so he could just go, you know, go be himself. Caleb Battle seems like a fit. I'm not sure about Tremont Mark. I'm maybe kind of leaning toward no. Um, but if KB and T Mark came back, hey man, I'm I'm not complaining about it for a second. Yeah. The other thought is like, how many guys do you want back from a team that stunk? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, you, like you take the best players, but yeah, uh, it's also like a winning culture kind of thing too and then I wonder how they would handle the potential of having some really highly touted freshmen surrounding them as upperclassmen and and potentially being you know ahead of them or in line with them in terms of the pecking order with shots and everything else I I just I don't know Uh, so we'll see we'll see what that kind of looks like Um, in terms of their high school class Kentucky's it's freaking loaded um six guys the number two class in the country they're not going to get all six of them um but i guarantee you they get some of them sure and so then the question becomes who's it going to be man they got some doozies and i i the the biggest one is the highest ranked recruit to me and it, it's going to be an outright battle uh but Jaden quaintance is he's special especially for a kid as young as him. And and 
speaking of youth, I mean, he's a guy who reclassed, he's young, he's got two years uh, that he has to play college ball before he's draft eligible. And I think you got a lot of stuff at play here. Um, I'm seeing everybody in the chat saying KSR is saying he, he'd like to stay at Kentucky. Great. It depends on who the coach is. Sure. You know, um, and, and so that's easy to say right now. It depends on who the coach is. Um, and he also committed to Cal and money talks. So, yeah, I mean, I don't think you go into most of these saying, oh, it's it, that, that's an easy flip, done deal, because they were all recruited so heavily by yeah. other big-time programs. Yep. Um, I think Missouri was actually the runner-up yeah, that's for what him. I was about to say. He's, I've got it. He his, ain't going there. I don't, his, I don't think he's going there. <laughs> in his bio, <laughs> I've got also recruited by, it was Missouri, Ohio State, Florida, and the G League. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how to really say this. Um, might be some things thing in at Florida. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's getting weird down there. <laughs> and <clears throat> Ohio State's interesting. I don't – you want to go play for Diebler? I don't know. Do you want to go play for Missouri? Right. Who? Uh, but then again, like if he just flat out reopens his commitment without flipping, that opens the door for everybody to get back in the – get back in the game yeah. on him. So it's not just like these last three or four schools that he was like most heavily recruited by previously. A lot of these guys would be smart almost to do that too. I Well, I guess you could look at it either way. Like you you open the door to everyone and you get into a, a bidding war for your services and that's good for you from a personal standpoint. But then you're also competing with all these big fish that are in the transfer portal who are proven that are going to get big bags too. So I, I guess you got to kind of weigh that. Um, no, I had seen a lot of things that uh, suggest that his family rocks with with Cal pretty hard. Um, but again, like if you you've been committed to a place for so long and you plan on probably moving there in a you know month and a half or whatever, like it's you know there's a lot of pull there. So we'll see what happens with that one. But I I mean, listen, they they're gonna try to get him, <laughs> right? No doubt, uh, he's really really good. I mean, six ten, two hundred twenty five pounds. He's a top ten player in the country. Uh, the dude is the real deal. Yeah, absolute the, um, real deal. Jamie Shaw at on three. I put in, put a bullet point in here for the scout, and then I just pulled from Jamie Shaw or or on three staff. Um, Quaintness, Quaintance, it's a strong and physical presence. Plays with a ferocity around the basket. I like he, that word. He hunts dunks every time he gets within five to ten feet of the rim. There we go. I'm ready to bring out the hashtag dunk everything. Yes. I'm ready to do that. <laughs> Ferocity again. is a great word. Um, can push the break. Excellent court vision. Good rebounder in and out of his area. You know, Eric talked a lot about range rebounding, you know, not just inside the restricted area when you're a big guy. Can you, you know, get to the short corners of the elbows too? Um, can slide his feet on defense, open his hips, change directions, natural timing uh, in terms of blocking shots and really good length around the basket. I mean, it's, why he's eighth in the 2024 class. Yeah, yeah, that'll play. Uh, Boogie Fland, another five-star in that class. He, New York kid, he can he can go, man. Yes. He's really, really good. Um, obviously, they, they would love to have him. I, I don't know what that one's going to look like. If I remember correctly, wasn't Bama very much in the mix for that one? Yeah, also um, recruited by Indiana, Michigan, Bama, and North Carolina. Yeah. So again, we'll we'll see uh, what it looks like there, but but that'd be a nice, <laughs> a nice piece to yeah. the backcourt. This might be where Cal's you know northeast connection and ties mm -hmm. kind of makes a, a difference. I mean, Boogie's from Harlem, um, and the scout on him is he plays with New York flair, which is <laughs> I love. It. Anytime I can watch a, a a kid from Harlem with some New York flair about yeah. him, I'm gonna check out his tape. So yeah, he's super talented. He's the second highest. Uh, rated kid that Kentucky's currently got in its in its class, for sure. Uh, Carter Knox, another five star. Uh, this one's really intriguing to me, and and maybe one that I I'd, I'd, I'd watch pretty closely. Um, you remember Knox, right? So you got the the family ties there with with Cal. Um, this was also a guy who Arkansas was in on recruiting wise. I don't think they wound up being a finalist, but they were in it. For a while there, there was a lot of talk about a potential visit. Never really came to fruition. But my point is, um, he's pretty familiar with what Arkansas has got going on. You know, he's got a, a good understanding of that. 
Uh, and then you have the coach that you committed to who's going there. So that's always something that you pay attention to. Uh, he would be a, a hell of a get. Absolutely a hell of a get. Um, that might be the... Maybe I feel better about that one just off the top than the other two uh, without really having a lot of time to digest it all just yeah. yet. And that, that's something that we'll be able to do over the course of the next day or two here. Sure. Uh, but yeah, he's a, he's a dynamite player, man. Yeah, other suitors he had, Louisville, South Florida, Kansas, Texas. And he's the highest rated guy that Kentucky's got in its current class who's not signed. So he's as of mm. right now he's just a just a commitment. Interesting. Um, so he wouldn't have to get out of any um, NLI type stuff. But yeah, he's a twenty first in the in the class according to on three lengthy, explosive wing frame is very projectable and already physically developed. Which that that you really like to hear that, right? Yeah, like that a, a young guy is going to get to campus and he's already like physically developed and can build on the frame that he's already got when he gets into a, you know, a college strength and conditioning program. Um, I, I did read, I thought it was interesting what Jamie Shaw wrote, would like to see him develop the jump, sh jump shot more, um, at least to become average in the catch and shoot. So it doesn't seem like he's like your typical, you know, blue chip knockdown shooter. Mm -hmm. Like I think there's, there's still room to grow there, but sure can obviously help you out in a lot of other areas. Billy Richmond's one that I'm really fascinated by. Uh, mm -hmm. Kind of the same mold, 6'6", 200, so a wing. Um, Memphis kid. So that that kind of gets your your attention there. Now, obviously, he, I mean, he was recruited by Memphis. Uh, Bama, LSU, Kansas, as I look at, uh, look at the list you put together there on the website. By the way, at NattyStateSports.com, we just started a preliminary hot board uh, that you might want to go over and check out. It's got a lot more information on all these guys in that freshman class. Uh, transfers that we're getting ready to talk about uh, that we'll go through pretty quickly here in a minute. Um, just, you know, other guys off the roster, whatever. Uh, just something to keep an eye on early on as they as they look to rebuild the roster. Um, but, yeah, Billy Richmond, that's one that really has my attention because he's such a regional guy, you know. For sure. <clears throat> his, um, his dad played for Cal at Memphis. Mm. How's that? Like, that doesn't seem like it makes sense. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> but, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> but yeah, he's uh, yeah, he's a really, really good player. Obviously, he's um, 6'6", 200. Again, he's a he's a, another commitment. He has not signed yet. Um, apparently, the jumper needs some development. But I think from from what I've seen, pretty smooth lefty. Yeah. And oh, he's a lefty. Like I believe so. You know how I feel about that. I believe so. Come yeah. on now. Another uh, <laughs> another projectable frame. According to, to Jamie Shaw, uh, puts pressure on the rim from the wing, can quickly turn defense into offense with anticipation and aggression and passing lane, switchable defender. That's what you want from 6'6", 220. Yeah. Or 6'6", 200, small forward. Um, I think he'd be a kid that, you know, being a Memphis Memphis kid, I think Arkansas fans would wrap their arms around him if, if he came here. So if – if I had to really pick one, I know he's one of the not like they don't have a low ranked kid in this class, but one yeah. that I would really like to have. It's Samto Cyril, 6'10", 240 pounds uh, from Nigeria originally. This dude is a scary individual. I mean, a terrifying individual. Um, he dunks with. Ferocity, which I absolutely love that that phrase that uh, that you used a minute ago. He protects the rim like an animal. He's got some some ish to him. Yeah, uh, that dude is like an he's an SEC big man, an SEC big man that Arkansas hasn't had. Yeah, there's no doubt about quite it. Quite honestly, no doubt the uh, the scout on him, premier rim protector, one of the best in the country, regardless of class. Um, still raw offensively. Hands are solid with um, passes thrown above his chest. So he sounds like a he sounds almost like one of those typical like late bloomers who are six ten and kind of I mean I don't know his basketball background but um, maybe just pretty new to the game. Um, just a difference maker on the defensive end of the floor. And I mean if you see the picture that we use for his profile on our on our website, I think you'll. Um, 
I think you'll like what he'd be able to provide, no doubt about it. Right, for sure. And I'm on board with you. Like, if there is a guy out of this class, I mean, I know you're probably kind of partial to Quaintance, and I'm kind of partial to to Boogie Flan, but I wouldn't mind Billy Richmond or 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 Cyril. Like, I think both of those guys are uh, those are can't miss. Right. Um, TB just declared for the draft and said he is hiring an agent. By the way. Um, that's, that's from Jonathan Gavoni. So there's a little bit of breaking news. I just, I just text the guys in there because we have a, a story ready for that. So maybe Andrew can sharpen it up for us and publish that real quick, which would be awesome. Um, but yeah, here we go. Uh, from Jonathan Gavoni news, Arkansas's Trevin Brazil is hiring an agent and declaring for the NBA draft. He told ESPN, uh, he says, Arkansas made a big hire with John Calipari. I'm happy for the program, but I'm going out for my dreams. I'm all the way 100% in the draft. So there you go. TB to the draft. Good for him, man. Good for him. So he's not he's not messing around with college anymore. No. That's, no. All right. I mean, but I'll say this. This is the year that if you're like just don't with this draft, don't wait around. Yeah. This is the draft that if you're you know, there are some projections out there Curtis like I I put in the in the story that that Ellis is going to get up in a minute. There was, I think there was a Bleacher Report mock draft that did not have him listed. And then there was another draft that I looked at. I think it was the Ringer that had him like mid second round. Right. So it's kind of like he's kind of one of those type of prospects in this draft. It just takes one team. But I will say there are two fewer picks than there normally are. There's just 58 picks in, the, in this year's draft. Right. Um, but shout out to TB. I hope he, hope he, like all it takes is a couple of months or just a few weeks of. You know, just really showing decision makers what you can do and your life can change. Yeah. In an yeah. instant. No doubt about it. And he he is a guy who he's gonna help himself. Not everyone can can up their stock at the combine. And that's why you see a lot of guys don't participate in a lot of the things. He is a guy who can help his stock at the combine because his his measurables are gonna be off the charts and he's gonna jump out of the gym and he's gonna knock down a bunch of threes and those drills that they do. Um, I think it's going to be a deal to where people are impressed by what they see. I don't. I, I don't even know if he goes to the scrimmages there. Like I don't know if he plays in the live games because I think he's going to test so well yeah. elsewhere and, and solidify his spot. Yeah, he's really going to be a freak in the test. He's going to get drafted. I I, I I I get it with the mock drafts and everything, but I think when those guys get like in person eyes on him, yeah, he will. Uh, not as high as you thought he would be able to because of of the injury concerns and, sure. and everything else. Um, maybe didn't develop as much as you thought he would uh, going into the season. Some of that's because he just couldn't he couldn't do anything all season, yeah, or all uh, all off season. But that's uh, there's a lot of upside there. I'd be shocked if he didn't get drafted. Oh. Yeah, I'm I'm in the same position too, and <laughs> I think he's a he's going to be a case where I think you might see his game take off in the league. Where the spacing is better, like that, like the college, the college game in terms of spacing hurts guys like him. Yeah. Um, and you know, there's I saw a, a, I think a note the other day in one of the in one of the projections that had TB getting drafted, um, talked about a lack of a an in between game. Well, like in the college game, it's kind of hard to do that. Yeah. Because everybody's just so compact around the elbows and the short corners and stuff. And um, I saw a little bit of it from him, but I think would have liked to have seen more. Um, I think he's off the drill. I think he's going to have to develop a more consistent handle. Um, I think as there were times last season where it seemed like about all he had was like a three-point shot or the shot fake a couple dribbles and then pitch it back out. I think yeah. he's got to be able to get to the point where he's comfortable putting the ball on the floor five, six, seven times and really – like, and he's got to be able to exploit mismatches when he's got them. Like there were, t again, times last year where he's got a much smaller player on him who might be quicker, but instead of – he just tried to drive by him instead of taking his time, being composed and, and you know, getting to a spot against a, a smaller defender. He just – I think he needs to get better there. Yeah, for sure. Um, we'll miss TB. I, I yeah. like the idea of, of him playing for Calipari. Uh, that enticed me, but was given the indication all along that the, at the bare minimum, he was going to 
test the waters and looks like he ain't even he ain't testing them he jumped in both feet so there you go yeah uh so best wishes to him man uh wish him a lot of success really good dude absolutely uh, was always was always really good to us so yeah i really appreciate the um at my old job last year um made him the cover of the basketball preview magazine that was done and um did a really like the longest biggest profile i've ever written was on tv talked to him and his dad and I appreciated the the transparency that they that they gave and um, you know that that new ink that TV rolled out there during the SEC tournament for a uh, a mentor that passed away not too long ago so I know he's he's driven for himself and his family but he's 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 playing for a lot for sure yeah no hopefully it's about a, it. hopefully it's a big summer for him for sure um, it's crazy how far he's come I mean before I before I even started on the beat. In Fayetteville, um, and I was still living in St. Louis in Missouri, and I was I was working with Prep Hoops as a scout, and uh, I'd be out at, at Parkview High School in Springfield, Missouri, watching him, and he was like six six, came off the bench, you know, as a as a sophomore and junior, uh, and then he just absolutely exploded, like physically, like growing, <laughs> he grew like five yeah. inches or whatever over, over the course of about a year, uh, but just got so much better. Um, and I remember I, I left to come down to Fayetteville his senior year of high school. And then when I heard Missouri signed him, I was like, oh man, I, I kind of took him at, thought of him as maybe a Missouri state kind of guy, you sure. know? Um, but then seeing him when, uh, like when Missouri came to town his freshman year, I was like, wow, I just couldn't believe how much he'd grown, uh, and matured. So yeah, best of luck to him. We only had one more high school guy to, to talk about and he's probably the one that we, we would need to talk about the least. Uh, Travis Perry, he's a Kentucky kid, um, top 100 prospect, you know, I, you look at that and you think about like who would, who would really be motivated to stay at, at Kentucky, probably regardless of who the coach was strikes me as this kid without knowing too much about him, but you know, for sure. Yeah. Ole Miss, Cincinnati, Missouri, Michigan. We're also, also in on him. Um, he's, he's, I don't want to say he's Reed Shepard, but he's got, He's got some stuff to him like Reed Shepard did. I just don't think he's got the the measurables that he did either. They've, on three, he's got Travis Perry listed 6'2", 170, kind of a point guard type. Um, but I, if I'm not mistaken, I think last year, maybe when Reed Shepard was a senior in high school, I think they went head-to-head, -head and this Perry kid put up 40-plus, and Reed Shepard scored 30-plus in, like in the same game. If I'm not mistaken, like I, I've got to go back and, and double check, but I think that's what I saw. So he can he can score, um, but I think like if if you got a you're kicking one to the curb, it's, it's probably probably sure. Travis Perry. Sure. Um, okay, let's let's get into real quick. We'll go through this as, as quick as we can, and then we'll get to some uh, some chat and get out of here so everybody can see the eclipse. Um, transfer contacts. This ain't Eric Musselman's transfer portal season, okay? Because Behind you, we've got the full board front and back. We've got all the names written on a different one. There's like, what, 69 of them that we had written down of, of people that Muss's staff had contacted. Yep. Uh, that list is a lot shorter for Cal at Kentucky, and they're very intentional about how they go around about transfers. Obviously, it's going to grow because of the amount of work they have to do um, here, but it's going to be a different, different thing to cover. One. Two, they've got a ton of NIL um, so if you really want to see the board, um, pull up the rankings at on three or 24 seven or wherever, and just the first page, there you go, because they're going to have the funds to be involved with everybody. And Cal's got the cachet to be involved with everybody. So Arkansas is going to go big game hunting. They're going to get some dudes, dudes no guaranteed yeah. book it Sharpie, whatever. But for now, We've got the list of guys he contacted while he was still at Kentucky because they're probably the ones to, to keep the closest eye on right away. Uh, starts with the guy who I would I would absolutely prioritize. You talked about defense and rim protection. Cliff Omaruri at Rutgers, he's as good as you find in the country. Uh, he's had a big-time career there. He's 6'11", 240 pounds, averaged three blocks per game, averaged nearly a double-double. We've got his build to – comp to Moses Kingsley, which is fairly close there. Yeah. Um, this dude is a game changer. I know, you know, Slick Rick Patino has been all over him at St. John's and, and other schools up in the Northeast, but don't count out Cal. 
Just, yeah. just don't count them out. For sure. If you didn't watch um, the stream from last night, like when I when I first sat down after Curtis had been going for two hours, um, <laughs> I said, you know, Big Cliff seems like a guy that Cal would make, you know, a top priority in the portal. Like there's – like maybe you do get one of those – high school commitments, one of those high school bigs um, to follow you over here, but it's always good to have potentially a an experienced rim protector. Like the kid, Big Cliff's been at Rutgers, what, for four years? And so he's he's familiar with with high major ball, and he's – I mean, God, dude, you look at look at him, he's, he's sculpted, 6'11", 240. I mean, come on. Yeah. That would be uh, – if, if I'm Cal, that's my first call. I'm just like – no doubt. Let me know what you need, and let's let's get down to business. Yeah, there's your there's your foundation piece in the yeah. middle to to build around. Uh, another guy who Arkansas had also contacted under the previous regime, uh, BJ Freeman, dynamite mid major player um, out of Milwaukee. It's a dude that averaged 21 points per game, six and a half boards, over four assists, and he shot 35 percent from three. Okay, I like that. Exact same size to Moses Moody. Uh, he is good. Yeah, very is. good mid-major player, and that's a type of guy that that Kentucky has had success with in the past, like those mid-major. Yeah, wings. Antonio Reeves was Illinois State man. Exactly, that's exactly right. And I believe it was Norlander where I was reading this reporting on some of the things that Cal really desired in making this move to Arkansas, and one of them was being able to get transfers in the door. And so a lot of people look at Kentucky's roster and it's like, man, they got all these young guys. Why don't they go out and get more? transfers out of the portal they've run into roadblocks doing that and i don't think that's something I mean, hell must didn't have to worry about it so i don't think yeah. that's something that's <laughs> going to be an obstacle for him here so there's going to be more of an emphasis i think um on the portal but yeah I, I like freeman a lot man for sure yeah he's a good looking player six six two hundred so he's obviously he's got the size that you like and that size Helped him score, according to CBB analytics, 113 times in the lane, 85 times at the rim, um, 47% from three on the left wing on 51 attempts, 39% on the right wing on 64. So he, sh he shot it from where he knew he could shoot it from. Yeah. It's always, always like those guys that are very well aware of, you know, where they get their shots from and um, where they can knock them down. No doubt about it. Moses uh, Moody build. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely love that. Uh, we've got a Jackson Robinson build up next. Uh, but another guy that Arkansas had had contacted when Muss was around as Cade Tyson out of Belmont. Wasn't really a Muss guy, but kind of fits the mold a little bit more for, for Coach Cal. Um, really good player at Belmont. 16 points per game, 5.9 rebounds, 6'7", 205. Uh, dude's got a strap on him now. <laughs> That's 46.5% from three. Um, I don't know what it's going to feel like to see Arkansas make threes. Uh, but I, I would love to see this guy do it. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm gonna have to turn the laptop around, Curtis. Oh, is this it time? Is not, it's not for Missouri. I'm not bashing Missouri this time. Oh, well, this feels but weird. Just check that out. Red is good. Red is good. In case you're wondering, that's that's insane. Yeah, that um, dude has got a strap on him. I've got him 23 for 43 in the corners, and 53 percent on the right wing on 38 attempts. I mean, he didn't shoot. He shot at least 39% from every area of the floor beyond the three-point line. Um, then he shot almost 50% on non-rim attempts in the lane. And then the elbows, 18 for 35. Like yeah, 40% around the three-point line, 50% around the around the elbows, and almost 50% on non-rim shots. I mean, that kid Crazy. Was, he was getting buckets from everywhere. Crazy. People are in the chat now saying Umar Balo, Arizona, is entering the transfer portal. Wow. Gimme, 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 gimme. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Whatever he needs in NIL, get that big man in here. That is insane. People who have been like, whoa, why can't we get a a Dama Sonogo or an Oscar Shibwe, whatever? Here's your chance to get that kind of guy. I would put him up there with with Cliff, maybe above him, honestly, in terms of uh in terms of the big men there. That's seven, crazy. Seven foot two sixty. Um Top 20 in the country in offensive and defensive rebound percentage, 66% on twos. He's a monster. I mean, he's just a, he's just a like his his block percentage is nice, but it's 
it's not like it's not big cliffs block percentage. Yeah. But Balo is more of a brick wall. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's your can't move him. That's your cinder block meatball. Type yeah, man. Build right there. Like he's no just doubt. a he's a presence, a deterrent. Like run into him and regret it. Yeah. Talk we'll keep an eye on that one. Yeah, no doubt. For sure. A uh, couple other guys, and we'll get to some questions. Two Virginia Tech guys. We'll touch on them quick. Uh, Sean Padula. It, again, man, it takes me back to my prep hoops days because I uh, covered a lot of regional summer ball tournaments and saw this dude. He's from Oklahoma, Edmond, Oklahoma. So that's not too far from uh, Fayetteville, by the way. Um, but he absolutely lit up the prep hoop circuit, man. He was so much fun to watch. Um, not that big of a dude, uh, 6'1", 195, but he was always kind of the not that tall, kind of jacked. And he's... When you look at him, like if you look at his photo on our at Natty State Sports, he's that kind of dude. Um, he's got some got some ish to him, and not a I mean he's not a knockdown shoot. He just gets it done, man. Sixteen points per game, uh, small guard who's averaging over four boards per game, four and a half assists. Uh, turned it over a little too much at Virginia Tech this year, but he's a good player, man. He scored twelve hundred points in his career. Um, if you're looking for a table setter at point guard. Um, who's got some toughness to him, who can defend, distribute. That's your guy. Uh, Tyler Nickel, a lot of people remember him uh, originally at North Carolina. He was a, he was a top 100 commit um, originally at North Carolina, transferred to Virginia Tech this year and, and actually had a pretty good year for him. Um, just, just strikes me as a, as a pretty solid wing, like a rotational wing type, Yeah. right? Yeah, he's um, very low, he's low turnover, Yeah. three-point shooter for you. Yeah, shot it well. Um, yeah, 39.9% from three, 8.8 .8 points. Doesn't rebound as well as maybe you'd like to see for a for a 6'7 guy, but yeah. someone to keep an eye on. But but one that's really got my attention, the last one here, is Jalen Blackman out of Stetson. Uh, Big-time scorer, man. Big-time scorer. Le led the A-Sun in scoring this year. A son, shout out JD Note, uh, was a first team all league guy. He was the newcomer of the year in that conference last year. Um, another dude who can just go out and get buckets, man. 21.3 points per game, uh, 38% from three on, a, on 110 makes. There you go. That's absurd. So the dude lets it fly. Uh, he would be a lot of fun to watch. An interesting note on, on Jalen Blackman uh, he's the son of former Kentucky player James Blackman. Okay. So. Don't know that that necessarily correlates with Cal. I haven't had time to look at it yet. I, it probably doesn't. But, you know, there's there's some... Obviously, they use that connection in recruiting. So maybe that's something that Cal can can parlay from that relationship. We'll see. There you go. Yeah, he had some, um, had some other interested, really, really nice other interested programs like Kansas, Indiana, UCLA, Texas, some others. So... Um, I think he would probably be a – if Arkansas were to grab him, he'd be better than Bebe was. Yeah. <laughs> From Stetson. <laughs> yeah, no no doubt about it, man. No doubt I, about it. They I, made I the, just, they made the uh, tournament this year too okay. with him. Yeah. yeah so That's some nice tournament experience. There you go. For sure. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah he tore it up. Just it's like left side of the floor. It's crazy. Like, look at this. You think – which – which way do you think he likes to, to get <laughs> yeah, to? No <laughs> like kidding, that's, that's pretty. <laughs> I think the <laughs> scout impressive. is out on you, my man. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. So very cool. Uh, we've got some guys on Kentucky's current roster maybe to monitor. I think we'll save that. Uh, that way we can can kind of get wrapped up here. We've got to have other stuff to talk about. Uh, we've been flirting with the idea of a, of a twofer pot at the Palace today, so we might uh, we might see what shakes out with with maybe getting some ink on paper with Cal. Maybe we can get some some concrete contract details and, and then talk about some of these Kentucky guys a little bit a little bit later today. We'll see about that. But I did want to just take a few minutes uh, because I promised at the beginning to uh, to run through the chat before this eclipse happens. David says, "Let's get weird, folks." Yeah, oh, it's it's getting weird. That's a fact. That is an absolute fact. He also says, "I would say at this point we are officially a basketball school." This did take some pressure off of Sam Pittman. I feel like. Yeah, I think you were exactly right about that last night. <laughs> no lies told. Might, might be the best thing that ever happened to that man, for sure. Might be. Um, let's see what we got here. We'll take a football thing. Hayden Pounce is not not to uh, not to make it too much about football, but do you think this helps or hurts football recruiting in the NIL era? 
I don't know what it's going to mean for Arkansas in terms of football recruiting, but I do know Arkansas Edge donations have been going going bonkers. So that's probably a good thing for them. Yeah, I would um, say so. And I don't know if you can go stump for that if you're if you're Pittman or whatever. I don't know how that looks. So I don't either. <laughs> I think the best way for football to help its uh, NIL bankroll is to go out and win games. Yeah, I mean you just. People are excited about Cal because he's won in the past and he can go recruit his tail off and get really good talent on campus. I think football does that. I think it'll take care of itself. For sure. David says, can we get rid of the hair gel and the suits? Was that part of the deal? I hope so. I bet the hair gel stays. I bet the suits are come and go. Something tells me he might be a suited up at home and quarter zip it on the road. Yeah, that might, guy. That might be right. Maybe. I mean... I, I have to go back to some of the games at Rupp and see if he was ever not in a suit. You can take the guy out of the Northeast, but you can't take the Northeast out of the guy. Like, yeah. Why do you yeah. want to? Let's not. Let's let's let let Cal be Cal. How we got to this point? For sure. Arkansas says I take back most of everything I was saying last week. Hunter completely redeemed himself with this one. I I told I'm pretty sure it was Hayden actually who's been here in the chat. Um, that if, if something hadn't popped off by midday Sunday, I was going to come in and do an emergency pod and just rant about how ridiculous this was. I'm so glad that I held off on that. Otherwise, I'd look like a real jackass right now. <laughs> but uh, listen, it, it's, a, it's a collective effort, and your check deserves a lot of credit for it. Um, absolutely. Whether it was the initial plan all along, I, I don't know. I kind of doubt it because it seems like such a pie-in-the-sky thing. Uh, but it is, I mean, knock on wood, is has got it done as soon as you get a, a signature on paper or whatever. Uh, but then also, I mean, the, the Tyson's, you know, and 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 the people with money who want a winner at Arkansas and are tired of the nonsense. Um, collective effort. So shout out to all of them for for coming together and, and making this a thing because it's it's just uh, it's unbelievable. That may be one of the things I'm most looking forward to. Like if and when we ever get to the introductory press conference, um, is just hearing Hunter talk about the search. You know, he's always after the fact, transparent, um, or at least relays what he wants to be relayed about the the. Everybody is going to be locked in on, on what Hunter had to say from the beard and tang stuff to the aha moment to the. Okay, this is a, a go with with Cal, right? And with the Tysons and all that, I'll, I I'm gonna be locked in on on what he has to say about that, as will everybody else, obviously. Yeah, man, no no doubt about it, no doubt about it. Um, let's see, what do we got here? Maybe just a few more as I'm scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Yes, we are tired. <laughs> Ain't no doubt about it on that one. We're running on heavy caffeine fuel right now. I had a two-year-old sure. climb on my head at 4.30 today asking to watch my phone. That's that's wild behavior. Good way to start the day. <laughs> oh, man. This is funny from James. Said, I'm like, John, Coach Cal was my most disliked coach. Is now I will uh, I will learn to love him. I think that's the the boat that a lot of people are in, deleting tweets. Sure. And uh, and changing their tone just a little bit. <laughs> I actually funny. went actually last night after we wrapped the uh, the live stream. I went on Twitter and searched my handle John Calipar John Calipari. I, keep, I just got to keep. I just got to say, Coach Cal. Yep. Um, <laughs> I don't really have anything. I didn't have anything to delete, so I'm kind of proud of myself. Good. Very good. Happy to hear that. I haven't done that yet, and I have a feeling. I probably should. Maybe on Facebook more than Twitter. We'll have to see. Uh, John says, timing on announcement and timeline to start expecting portal pops. Um, announcement should come at any moment, and then I would, I would anticipate a press conference tomorrow, um, most likely, or, or Wednesday. I don't know. Um, we've heard rumblings of, of tomorrow at 3 o'clock, but haven't got anything real official on that yet. Uh, portal pops, ASAP. Whether it's a portal pop or a or a commitment flip or whatever, it ain't gonna take long for the for them to start making a couple splashes, because you want to have um, a little bit of a foundation laid so you can talk to these other guys that you're really going after and saying, hey, 
we already got this these dudes come join what we're what we're putting down here yeah for sure <clears throat> Um, let's see. Yeah, it's a lot of people asking about, you know, when can we expect some sort of official word from the U of A or Cal? I think when it's like when there's a signature, right? And he's people are talking about him having a meeting with his team and everything, probably informing them and um, ironing out all the details because it's something that came together fairly quick. And, and I don't know if it got out before it needed to or whatever, but there's a lot of things that go into a a contract so um it would have been cool if that would have happened last night or whatever but you know no here doubt. we are i was hoping it was going to pop before we before we recorded yeah yeah today. me too for sure um and then keep in mind everyone out there listening uh like john john the john neighbor show goes live at four uh, he's got the call-in option so if you want to you want to hear your voice you want to hear yourself talk about this light him up light him up like he'll he will take phone calls for two hours today that'll be highly entertaining uh if we do anything else unless it's just something absolutely crazy we, we will probably be on the recording end of that so make sure you get subscribed um over our united states sports youtube channel so you can catch that whenever we publish um yeah i mean i think we covered covered a lot of it here so we gotta get out of here i want to see this eclipse i want to see it get dark man and then get light again, and then, I don't know, maybe have a little lunch or something. Yeah, lunch would be good. Loaf and cool eat today. Loaf and yos? Yeah, I'm down, dude. <laughs> you don't have to ask me twice. Man, all right. Well, hey, honestly, um, I want to give a shout-out to uh, to the OGs over here at the Pot at the Palace, uh, the people that have been rocking with us since the beginning. We started this. We got a lot of new people. We started this company um, on January 15th, and... It did not go the way we thought it was going to go in terms of we thought we would be able to parlay a really good Arkansas basketball team and the must bus rolling through the NCAA tournament into a lot of really good content. Um, it just didn't work out the way we, it was a disaster. And yeah. there were some dark days, man, um, when we continued to, to cover this team and everything that was going on. We were literally in the the details don't matter. Yes. Part. Of, yeah. Of this whole thing hitting hitting the skids man it was it's it was been, not fun no it was not it was not a fun cover i remember i wrote um <clears throat> after arkansas lost to vanderbilt at home and we're not going to talk about last season i shouldn't even say this um didn't want to write i wrote anyway and nobody wrote it or nobody read it <laughs> and it's just like dude we've got to got to move on to, to something bigger and better yeah because like, that was that was miserable for sure yeah, so so major shout out to those who have been rocking with us from the start, uh, and welcome to everybody new who's getting really interested with everything that's going on. You're you're one of us now. We appreciate you. We do this <laughs> a lot um, during portal season. When portal season first started, before this must thing was going nuts, we were we were, we had a show every day, um, and and chances are we're going to be doing that for a while now because uh, this is crazy. It's unique. It's something that doesn't happen. Uh, to Arkansas athletics, but it's happening to us right now. We're all in this together, and we're really, really excited uh, to continue talking about it. Uh, going to be a lot of breaking news with staff announcements and player announcements. It's just going to be a, an absolute wild ride, yeah. and uh, can't wait to to get in there and, and see Coach Cal call the Hogs. It's just going to be – talk about surreal, buddy. <laughs> yeah, that's going to feel fever dreamish. Nothing else. I'm going to have to take pictures so I can look back the next day and just remember that it actually happened. Exactly. Any parting thoughts? Um, just appreciate everybody listening and might go again later today. We'll just have to see what the rest of the day looks like. But yep. Um, oh, I also mentioned you were talking about lunch. John brought dino nugs in today. Oh, yeah. Shout Ty out Tyson. Tyson dino nuggets. Yeah. Good point. John last night, he said, <laughs> You you ever had these Dino Nuggets from from Ty, Tyson Dino Nuggets? I'm like, John, I've yeah, dude, I got kids. Like we had it like <laughs> twice a week. That's that's seventy percent of Scotty's <laughs> diet, bro. <laughs> and I I smash them, dude. Like any any nugget that my kids don't eat, I'm there for them. I love that. Absolutely love it. All right, we're out of here. We'll probably be back. Uh, stick with us. Enjoy. This has been very cool. Arkansas fans. You're crazy. We love you. You deserve this. We'll talk to you soon.